This video was brought to you by Skillshare. Arlington stared hungrily at the taco. Then he ate it, also hungrily. Hmm. Uh, might need to work on that one. Oh, hey! Noah, the vaguely hipstery artist guy here, just drawing my hand at some short fiction. The thing is, though, like, did you know that writing takes, like, a whole bunch of work? That's why I'm not doing it alone. When launching into a creative endeavor, Skillshare is a great place to start. Skillshare is an online learning community with classes covering writing, photography, illustration, graphic design, and much more. Classes include a video lesson and a hands-on assignment and generally take about an hour to complete, so you can tailor your entire experience to fit your schedule. New classes are being added every week, and with Skillshare Premium, you get unlimited access to the entire library of high-quality, completely ad-free classes. As for me, I'm about to take Writing Character-Driven Short Stories by Yiyun Lee. Judging by the reviews, I can tell this is gonna be a good one. If you wanna supercharge your creative endeavors and learn invaluable lessons from industry pros, the first 1,000 people to hit the link down in the description or use the code ARLO13 at checkout will get 30% off their first year with Skillshare, which is three months free. This is the best deal they've ever done. Now back to this short story. Arlington ate the next taco hungrily as well, with a fire blazing behind his eyes. Ooh, ooh, that's good. I got goosebumps. It's so rough. Sit down. Just uh, take a seat. We, um, we need to talk. And you're probably not going to like this. And you know what? I'm, I'm not going to enjoy this either, okay? This... Uh, this hurts me just as much as it does you. But we're going to talk about the Sonic 2 movie. <laughs> Send the kids to bed. You know, this, uh, <laughs> this, this isn't a fun video where a, a blue monster talks about the fun new Sonic movie. So just send, send those kitties to bed. Um... A little, little, little background. To this day, to this day, I am confused. So confused about the reception to the first Sonic movie versus Detective Pikachu. I still don't get it. I feel like I'm being gaslit by the whole world. I, they came out fairly close to each other. And I felt that Detective Pikachu was the only video game adaptation I've ever seen that tried to be true to the source material. It took place in the Pokemon world. It, it, it had Pokemon acting the way that Pokemon do. It actually tried. It was literally actually written, we know, confirmed by people like my age, who actually like Pokemon. Not as many people like that movie. Then you have the Sonic movie, where the trailer was bad, and the humor, and then they changed the design, and that was better, but like, it was still just this mediocre, milk toast Hollywood schlock. And everyone liked it. And I didn't like it. And I, I just, I still don't get that. That that was like a faithful adaptation. To me, it was just nobody who had ever played a Sonic game in their life wrote that movie, is what it felt like. It had very little to do with Sonic. And it was just kind of like blue funny man. It was like Sonic go fast and um, robot, uh, Eggman, bad man who likes robots. That was it. That's the end. Rings? Something about rings. I don't know. So, like, I still don't get it. And it's, it's happening all over again here. All over again here. Am I seeing the same movie that other people are seeing? And just so, like, I feel like it goes without saying, but, like, just to start things off, like, most people like the movie. That's cool. I'm not gonna tell you you can't like the movie. That's great. I'm happy, genuinely happy for you, okay? This is Arlo. This is Arlo giving Arlo's opinion. So with that said, I go into the second movie and I'm like, they can 
only go up from here. The first movie started out as like a really bad Hollywood adaptation that like then, okay, so then, you know, they brought in Tyson Hess and they redid the art and that's cool. And so I'm like, okay, second movie, they got it. They're gonna bring in more people who know what they're doing, who know how to write a good Sonic movie. You know what I mean? And you can tell by the trailer, there's so much more um, just imagery, just Sonic related imagery, all the references and stuff. And I'm just like, it's gonna be like, you know, like it can only go up from the first movie. That's, that's I, I just kept thinking that. Like I did not have high expectations. I was like, I'd be happy if it was one single step up from that first movie. That would make me happy. I, <laughs> and I try to go into any movie with an open mind, always. You know, people people will accuse you of being like, oh, you were just grumpy, you just expected that. Like, no, man, like I can, I can enjoy a movie. I know how to enjoy a movie, <laughs> okay? I can go in with an open mind. And like when I, I, I brought the same friends with me, it was Brian, Dan, and Nolan. We all went to see the first one. When we came out of that movie, this is a lot of setup, I know. But you know what? Buckle in. Buckle in. This is what we're doing. I told you to sit down. <laughs> when we came out of that first movie, I was like, that was mediocre. Not like bad, but not good. It was just, it was just, it was just whatever. Dan kind of hated it. Brian uh, didn't really like it. Nolan was like, it was okay. Like, okay, you know, like, all right, kind of middling to lower to high, sort of a... We walked out of this movie shocked. <laughs> all four of us shocked, confused. Even Nolan, he had the highest opinion of the first one and just, we were baffled. Just baffled. And you know what? I was tempted to record, it was late last night, I was still buzzing with the adrenaline of how I felt about the movie. And you know, and, and we all talk about, you know, a lot of the things in this uh, this review were kind of hashed out like after the movie, we're all talking about it and ranting about it and stuff. And like, and I, and I give credit to my friends if I say anything that like one of them said. Um, I felt that I owed it to you, my wonderful audience, to sleep on it. I didn't come straight into the studio like I wanted to. I thought like, you gotta let your brain process it. You gotta let your emotions kind of come down. You know, I, I don't wanna be, I don't like strong negative emotional reactions. I don't do that on this channel, you know? It's too much. I'll have a strong positive reaction, but like, I don't wanna just be like angry. That's not what I do. I did that once and it was when they revealed Hey Pikmin and I removed that video. Cause it's just, I don't wanna do that. So I slept on it, I owed it to you. And I woke up this morning, I might have been, <laughs> I mean, it, I wasn't less angry. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't less baffled and angry. Um, sleeping on it didn't do much. I'm just gonna say that. This is a spoilery review. Go see the movie. The movie's out, you know, I don't know, like, I'm gonna, you get, if you don't want spoilers, you could just turn it off now because you get where I'm going with this. You get where I'm going with this. But I, I have to, I got it. Like I have to talk about some of the specific things in this, but I have to, because I just, I feel so strongly, <laughs> so strongly about them. Okay, so the movie starts and I'm like, yeah, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. It starts off so, Slowly. It's so, oh my gosh, the first chunk of the movie, we're all squirming. We're literally squirming in our seats because it's so boring and it's just, it takes so long to get anywhere. And it's all the same, just like the human stuff and the, the regular real world modern living stuff and the sappy emotional stuff, the monologues like from the first movie and like, this is me, okay, not everyone agrees with me, obviously. There's a lot of Sonic media where he is with humans in a human world. It's usually not even the real world, it's at, le at the very least in that case, it's Sonic 
and it's like in an alternate human world, so it's still sort of fantasy. Um, I have always felt like Sonic is at his weakest when he is around humans. The best Sonic show was the one where it's just Sonic and his animal friends fighting Robotnik. They're in, uh, they're, they're, you know what I mean? Like they're in a fantasy world. That's cool. That's awesome. You put them in a city and there's people. I don't like it. I don't like, I just think it's, I just think it's not fun. You're taking this fun fantasy character with his own cool world and making it. So like already, I'm not a fan of these movies, especially because it's the real world, our modern real world. So even at its core, it's difficult for me to enjoy these movies, you know? And so like, so I already really don't like this whole like James Marsden, Tika Sumter, like family thing, you know, like, I'm what like I'm a kid and I'm playing Sonic and it's like hey there's going to be a Sonic movie someday. I'm not imagining James Marsden and Tika Sumter lecturing Sonic about responsibility. <laughs> Treating him like a kid. You know what I mean? That's I'm just I'm, that's not So the opening is, oh, oh, it's a slog, just a slog. And it's all the same jokes and all the same themes. And like, just immediately, it's pretty quickly apparent that this was not like picked up by a totally new writing team who's gonna invigorate everything. No, this, this is a sequel. <laughs> this is a direct sequel to the last movie. The, the feel, the vibe, everything about it is, yeah, no, that's, they didn't change that. And so, like, it goes on and on. I'm waiting for the movie to pick up. I know cool stuff is going to happen. I've seen the trailers. It's going to be cool. There's going to be Knuckles and his tails. So, like, they finally show up. Oh, yes. Yes. Knuckles and Tails and, and, and Eggman are there. And they're confronting Sonic. They're doing it in a house. They just kind of show up to his house. Okay, that's awkward. But sure, whatever. They're going to do something cool. And then, like... Knuckle, Knuckles is fighting Sonic and Tails saves him by hitting him with a police car. Like he steals a police car and drives it and hits so Knuckles with it. And it's just like, okay, again, watching a Sonic movie, a Sonic movie with Sonic and Tails and Knuckles and Tails just hit Knuckles with a police car. Okay. Is that the Sonic movie you would write if you were writing a, like, honestly, would you write that into your Sonic movie? Okay, I'm trying not to get hung up on too many, there's a lot, there's a lot to talk about. Um, and it's, a th I was, thought this would be the point in the movie where, like, it would get good, but instead, this is the moment in the movie when everything falls apart, and the plot loses all semblance of a structure. I, I mean, I'm not the kind of person who's gonna sit there and analyze the three acts of the movie and all that stuff. You know, you wanna break formula sometimes if it works, but like I, I cannot remember, honestly, cannot remember the last time I watched a movie that was so sloppily structured, so horribly paced. There is no first, second, third act. It's just like the beginning and then stuff happens <laughs> until the end. You know what I mean? I don't know where we're going or how we're gonna get there. It's just kind of stuff happening. It's like, it's. I felt like I was there in the writer's room with them on a big old timey typewriter. I'm sure that's what they all use. Trying to just come up with another thing for the characters to do. Another a scene for them to just kind of do a thing, just to pad out the runtime a little bit more. Okay, where could they go now? What could divert them from, you know what I mean? Like it was so, I just, I felt like I was there with them and they were throwing everything at the dartboard, throwing every, we, we were joking after the movie. It's like they threw everything at the wall and saw what stuck and nothing stuck. <laughs> It's just, just none of it stuck. It was just all of the nonsense that you'd throw into a movie in like the early idea process and they didn't cut any of it. You're supposed to like cut down from there. 
They didn't. They just left it all in. They took every idea anyone came up with and they were like, we are going to force this to work. Okay. So Tails and Sonic, they hit Knuckles with a car or whatever. They get away from Knuckles and Eggman. And it's like, all right, here we go. Here we go. They've got like a, they've got a quest. They've got a thing they're going to do. They're going to go after the Master Emerald. This is going to get good. An Emerald? A, a Chaos Emerald? Awesome. I'm here. I am, I am watching. Here we go. And then... <laughs> oh, no. The, f the first, the first thing they do immediately... They warp to some snowy mountain. Cool, this is getting epic. What's that building over there? Let's see. Well, you know in the first movie, there was a scene where they go into a seedy bar with a bunch of angry people who are gonna beat them up and Sonic has to pretend like... Yeah, they just do that again. They just do that again. Except this time it's Sonic and... They just do it again. They just go, Except this time it's like, it's, you know, and it's... <laughs> it's in another country. They don't speak the language. So then they have like the classic like mistranslation joke where it's like, oh, can I have a bowl of soup? And then the translator says, you smell like farts today. And it's like, great, yeah, I haven't seen that joke before. So like all, all of these people, so it's the same thing, it's a bar and all these people, when they realize that Sonic and Tails aren't really strange little people, they're actually um, whatever they are, they don't even, like, this movie has the most crazy cartoon logic. They don't even react. They don't even, like, what's going on? They're just like, monsters, throw them in the fireplace. Like, literally, that's the first thing they go to is just pick them up and throw them in the fireplace. And then they get away from them throwing in the fireplace by having a dance battle. A dance battle. A dance battle. Why not? Sonic and Tails are having a dance battle in a bar, in a pub, so that they can stop themselves from getting thrown in a fire. Throw so that happens. And of course, the whole time, like, they, they want, they need the map. Oh no, we need the map, but they've got the map. And like, okay, here's the point where it's like, I just saw Sonic clean his disgusting house in three seconds. I've seen him zip across entire counties in a second. Grab the map. Grab the map at any point. Just run over there and grab it. Oh, it's, oh no, there's the map. Grab the map and zip out of there. you be out in a second. Be out of, no, you gotta have a dance battle. Because of course you have to have a, of course you have to have a dance battle. And so like, that's the beginning of like seeing scenes. Like that's the thing about this movie is it's a two hour movie. It is a two hour kids movie. And there are entire scenes where you're like, okay, that could have just not been there. It doesn't need to be two hours. <laughs> you could have just chopped that whole thing out and it would have been fine. I, oh, it's even worse. Oh my gosh. Oh, this hurts. This hurts to, I'm gonna describe another scene. No, it's not a scene. It's not a scene. It's a series of scenes. It is a section, a significant section of the movie. This, I'm gonna try my best here. I, I, I... So James Marsden, uh, his sister-in-law doesn't like him. She's getting married. Oh, you better not mess up my wedding. Okay, yeah, it's gonna mess up the wedding, whatever. So then like, the... He has to save Sonic. Sonic is, and Tails are being chased by an avalanche across the world and he has to throw out a ring. And you saw it in the trailers and then all the snow comes out of the rings and it ruins the wedding. Oh no, you ruined the wedding. Like, cut. End. End of scene. Right there. You did it. You saved Sonic. You ruined the wedding. It's funny. She's mad at you. Awesome. Done. No, that's not the end my friends, that's not the end at all. That, that should have ended there. It should have ended there, but no. All, everybody, it turns out that everybody in the wedding was actually an undercover agent. And this wedding was an operation to capture Sonic. Even her fiance was in on it. And all the hotel staff at the entire resort, everyone in Hawaii was in on 
this operation to capture Sonic. How did they know Sonic was gonna be there? How did they know he was being chased by an avalanche and James Marsden was gonna use a ring to teleport him into the wedding? Where We, we were like, okay, we have to be missing something. We have to. This can't be the logic they're trying to get. I, I don't, I don't get it. Why didn't they just go to Sonic's house? They know where Sonic lives. If they know he's attached to James, why? We, we can't, we're, we're, and like, it gets so, we, it gets so much worse. Again, sure, end it there. That was ridiculous. I don't understand it at all. Just none at all. Not even in a cartoon logic, kids movie kind of way. Can I understand that? I don't get it. Am I missing something? Let me know in the comments. Did I not get it? And then the government guys capture James Marsden and Sonic, and then you get, you get Tika Sumter and her sister going on this odyssey to, to save them and, and for the sister to be mad at the guy who was gonna, and so like, they're just trying, oh, and she, they've got like the backpack of Tails' uh, inventions and they're like bumbling their way and using them to like kill a bunch of guys and it, it, it goes on and on. And then there's a big like face off between the sister and her husband and, you're like, I don't know these characters. I do not know these characters. I don't care about these characters. The sister was in the first movie for like two minutes. And now it's this whole plot line of her and her fiance. And they have this whole tearful reunion. Did you actually love me? Oh, I broke the first rule of undercover work. Never fall in love with the person that you're pretending to fall in love with. Oh, uh, what is happening? Who are these people? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. It's just like this ridiculous, it was already such a bad twist in the movie and it just goes on and on and on before they finally save Sonic. And it's just like, what is this? It's another scene that could have just been chopped off. You chop off the dance battle and you chop off this and you have a nice clean hour and a half movie. But it's, it's, a, it's a mess. It's a mess. It's a, it's a kill. Here's the thing though, my theory, they couldn't chop those scenes. Do you know why? Because those scenes were part of the checklist. Because this isn't a movie. <laughs> this wasn't a script they were writing. This was a corporate checklist that they had to fill and they had to fill all of those boxes, tick all the boxes and make that into a story, whether or not it worked. And like, just throughout the entire movie, I can see the checklist. I can see the list the executives gave to the writers the whole time. So like, okay, yeah, you're writing the Sonic movie. Okay, we gotta have a dance battle, okay? We have to have a crashed wedding because you gotta make sure there's enough humans for the parents. We gotta have at least one fart joke. Sonic has to hurt himself and say, nailed it. And, uh, and, and there have to be at least five or 10 references to modern tech services like Uber and stuff, you know? And we need uh, more flossing and more Fortnite dances that are separate from the dance battle, totally separate. And then of course, and then of course, the precious, precious references. Ooh, <laughs> let's talk about the references. If you, watching this right now, if you are able, if you have the ability to feel that this movie is some sort of love letter to Sonic because of all the references and Sonic imagery, I'm jealous. I want to be in your position. I am happy for you. I wish I was you. I do not have the ability to feel the same way. I can't. <laughs> The references, they didn't, they didn't do much for me because the rest of the movie is so terrible and so far removed from Sonic and what I like about Sonic. And, and like I said, like after seeing the first movie, seeing the trailer for this one, like you can see all the imagery and it's just like, surely they got someone who cares about Sonic. Like they had to, they had to have. But like the references are almost entirely artificial. They're just like, 
They're part of the checklist. They're just stapled on. We have to have him up on a building like in Sonic Adventure. And we have to have him snowboarding like Sonic 06. And we have to have that badly drawn Sonic picture meme again, even though we already referenced it in the first movie. And, and we gotta have Sonic say, gotta go fast. <laughs> It doesn't do anything for me. That's not stapling this kind of stuff onto a generic Hollywood schlock movie. Like, that doesn't make it a love letter. That, I mean, I don't use the word pandering a lot, but that's what it feels like to me. Let's just make the same generic boring garbage and staple on a bunch of references. That's literal pandering right there. That's just being like, hey, look at us, look, we got the memes, we got the, we got the references. Oh. The, the humor's bad. That's, that's really the, that's really the main, like, it almost doesn't even matter what happens. I am complaining about the plot, but like, if the humor's good, you can, I'll enjoy pretty much anything, you know? It's not good here, it's bad. It's bad, it's even worse than the first movie. It's like every lazy, cliched kids movie catchphrase in the book is in this movie. And that to me, like I, maybe I'm particularly sensitive to that kind of stuff because that makes it feel like you're not writing a movie. You're not, you're not writing a movie for people to enjoy. You're not writing a movie that you would even enjoy. You're just writing a movie with jokes that you know kids have laughed at before so you just put, like, that's the mark of a bad movie. An Illumination trailer played, and it was just before the movie. It's the same thing. It's all the same horrible jokes from a lazy screenwriter. Oh, and Jim Carrey. Man, I'm so torn on Jim Carrey. Like, there, I mean, like, I like Jim Carrey. There's part of me that loves the super cartoonish, over-the-top shtick that he's got, you know, like I, like the Grinch, his Grinch. I'm one of the few people that just absolutely loves that movie. Cause I, I, it's fun. I like seeing this larger than life character who's a human, but he's like a cartoon character. And it's like, I go back and forth between being like, he is funny and kind of charismatic and just being like, he's so, it's too much. J this is Jim Carrey cranked up to 12. <laughs> this is like, it's, Every second he's on the screen, it's so over the top. It's so, but like, it's like I said, I kind of like it sometimes and other times it's just like, stop. It's too much, it's too much frosting on the cake. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, oh man. And it's funny because like the first movie has this like 45 minute long scene where he just dances and it was like probably the worst part of the movie because it's just like, what is this? And so like every time he would like start to do like a dance, like me and Brian are just like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like don't do it again. No, please. Um, you know what's funny? The um, annoying, overly stupid comic relief character, I normally really don't like. The character Wade, he's like a deputy police guy or whatever. In the first movie, he was the character that like was the closest to having me chuckle a couple times, even though I could see what they were doing with him. And it's funny because like, I don't know if it's just because the rest of the movie was so bad and the humor was like so consistently bad, but like he was in this movie and like he had some of the best lines in the movie. Like we, I, the, yeah, I don't know if it was just the context. I don't know if otherwise we would have thought it was that funny or we were just like looking for something funny, but like, he had some lines that had us just laughing our butts off. So I liked him. He had some really funny lines. I liked him. So, okay, this is the part where you, you are just, you're screaming at your screen right now. You're screaming at me. Arlo, it's a kid's movie. It's a kid's movie. It's for, just relax, man. Kids will think it's funny. And I, I talked about this in my review of the first movie, and I will repeat it now, even though I know it is pointless <laughs> and no one will listen to it. And uh, whatever, I'm still gonna say it. Um, kids' movies can be good, is the thing. Yes, a kid is more likely to enjoy this movie, and I will allow them to do so. I will not stop them. Sure, but like, a kids' movie can also be good. Kids movies can appeal to both adults and kids. Like that, a successful family movie works for both. 
some of my favorite movies of all time are kids movies. The Lego movie single-handedly proved that you can have the most kid, uh, kid-likey, like, like the most silly, oddball, kid-centric humor that is still funny. It's not cliched, it's not copy-pasted garbage, it's still funny, and it's good for adults, and it's just a good movie for everybody. That's a thing that can happen when you, like, care and you try, <laughs> you know? Oh man, I'm gonna get roasted for this. Oh my gosh, just saying stuff like that. I'm sorry, that's the way that it feels. If someone who wrote this movie does care about it, I'm sorry. I still hate it. <laughs> I still think it's so, oh, okay, sorry. <clears throat> Point is, kids movies can be good. They don't have to be formulaic, focus-tested, copy-pasted junk. Kids will like it because they don't know any better is, it doesn't excuse a bad movie. It's still a bad movie. Like, like it can still have good humor that's like, natural and it's just genuinely funny. You know what they do in this movie a whole lot, constantly? They, they'll just say a line that's like nonsense. They'll just say something and you're like, what are they, what are they even talking about? Oh, it's because they were setting up a joke. Like they will shoehorn in as many of these jokes as they can and just like wreck what people are trying to say because they're trying Oh yeah, it's because they wanted to say that joke and they had to like force it in instead of like making it <laughs> making it natural. Okay, also on the whole kids movie argument, what is this movie? Is this movie aimed at kids or is it a love letter quotes packed with references that are exclusively for all of the 20 and 30 something people who grew up playing these games? Because I don't feel like they can have both in this case. Kids aren't gonna get those references if they came to just enjoy it. Like they don't know what those references are. They don't care. But then like if the references are for me, cause I grew up playing the games, but it's a bad kids movie. What do I care about the references? You know, like I, I, the references don't make it any less of a bad, dumb kids movie. Also, if it's a kids movie, why is it a kids movie? Most Sonic fans, most people who know who Sonic is are not kids. It's, it's the classic mistake of the out of touch studio executive to make a product using an IP, not for the actual audience of the IP, but for the audience they think it should have. You know, it's, it's like the Pokemon thing. You can't say it's like this because it's for kids when we have seen, we have seen raw data. <laughs> the majority of Pokemon fans are not kids. They are adults. That is a simple fact. Okay, so there's there's another thing people will inevitably say to me, and you, and you better believe I got a whole spiel for it. They're gonna say, Arlo, relax, man. It's just dumb fun. You're not supposed to take it seriously. Just like, just relax and enjoy it for what it is. I can do that. I can do that in some cases. Absolutely. You know, I've enjoyed movies and I'm just, I just think it's dumb fun. I like it for, it's not, you know, Pacific Rim, very flawed. It did have too much boring stuff, but like I still ended up thinking that the robot stuff was fun enough. I still enjoyed the movie. There has to be something there that is enjoyable for me to think it's enjoyable. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like when people like bad horror movies and there are some horror movies that are so baffling and so bad that they're fun. But like, there are lots where people are like, oh man, it's funny, Sharkzilla or whatever. And it's like, it's not even funny. It's not even good. There's no entertainment value. It's not good because it's, I can't just relax and enjoy it because it's just not good. That's like saying, it's like saying, okay, here's a hamburger. Re just enjoy the hamburger for what it is. You know, I don't mind that it's filled with gravel. They just put a bunch of gravel between the cheese and the lettuce. Uh, and every 10 seconds, someone runs up and slaps you in the face while you're eating. Just enjoy it for what it is. I can't, I'm sorry, <laughs> okay? I can't enjoy the good parts when I'm constantly just biting into rocks. It's like, and I really, I really did try. Like, honestly, like, 
the best parts of the first movie were when you had just like this the spectacle of just like Sonic is doing something fast and fighting robots or whatever, you know, or like the end where it's like, you know, like where it's just I can I can kind of like ignore all the outside stuff and for a few moments be like, whoa, I am sitting in a theater and I'm watching a Sonic movie. This is so cool. And they're just such tiny little snippets. And so I thought that because this movie was going to have a lot more like Sonic stuff, you know, emeralds and knuckles and all like like a lot more imagery, I thought that that would just automatically make it more enjoyable. But it's like it has even more of that other asinine annoying stuff that I it's like I couldn't. I tried so hard to zero in, but every time I was about to start enjoying myself, something would come in. The horrible cliched one-liner would come in. A human character would be like, whoa, hey, look, parents, we're still here. Don't get bored with these boring cartoon characters. No, we're still here. You know what I mean? Like, it never stopped. It never slowed down enough for me to just be like, whoa, Sonic is fighting Knuckles and it's cool. Like, maybe just for like a few moments here and there, but then it just like instantly shattered just right away. And just like, and I can't even stress enough. I know I've said it plenty, but just the human stuff. Like, it's just because the executives are scared of making an actual Sonic movie. Just with any video game movie, they're scared of actually doing it. They need people to be able to relate to it. And the people who don't, so it's just, that's why the humans are there. And so it's just, oh, just every time I wanted, I wanted so badly to enjoy it. And it's just like, nah, -uh, look at this instead. Oh, Sonic is fighting the giant giant Eggman robot. Oh, this is finally getting good. And there's James Mars and Tika Sumter coming in their truck to bring back the whole family thing. Oh. It's like I have Sonic in my heart. You know, like I have I have the childhood nostalgia. See like when whenever you see Sonic and Knuckles and Tails on screen all at once, just as a snapshot. There's definitely this thing that, this little thing inside of me that's like, oh, like that's so cool and the colors are striking and then it's just, it looks, you know, like it's Sonic and Knuckles and Tails and they're on the big screen and like I, they came so close. It had so much potential to be exciting, but it just, I ain't done. <laughs> I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm, we're still, I got more. I'm getting tired, but I, I got more. Um, another issue that also made it really difficult to enjoy the parts that I should have enjoyed was like, okay, suspension of disbelief. It's necessary for basically any movie. I get it, absolutely, but I have limits to how much I can suspend. Um, Dark Knight Rises, did not like that movie. Kinda hated that movie because like the first two movies made sense and then in the third one, all of a sudden, every action scene, everything that anyone does doesn't make sense. They use this wacky cartoon logic where it just any just everything they try to do a thing and you're like that doesn't work that way. Why why did they do that? Why didn't they just do like, you know what I mean? The thing that makes you like. I can't even suspend the disbelief. I can't immerse myself in the experience because I'm just yelling at the screen and being like, why would you do that? That's not how those things work. So like Sonic and Tails and Knuckles, their powers are completely inconsistent the entire time. So off the wall inconsistent that like, all of us were just like, what the heck? Why did that happen? You know, it's just like with Sonic, like, why didn't you take the map? Why didn't you just zip over there and take the map out of his hands? You know, there's a bad guy like, oh, Eggman's about to grab the emerald. Run over there, run over there. <laughs> it changes from shot to shot. In this shot, Sonic, er, like Tails is zipping over the landscape just as fast as Sonic. And over here in this shot, Knuckles is faster than Sonic. He's like beats him somewhere. But then in this other scene, of course, Sonic is back to being fast. And in this scene, Sonic is running, but he's not like pew Sonic running. He's just like, <laughs> like just run. It's like, why didn't you just, why are you running that slow? It just doesn't. 
just the mo just the whole time the most ridiculous frustrating movie logic like I, I can i can suspend it i promise you plenty of movies that i forgive because at least i can be immersed and this one is just like no this is every single shot is just stupid <laughs> stupid and like that, oh my gosh, and that's the thing. It's not even just the action. It's not even just the, the inconsistent powers. The whole movie is filled with just nonsense. Just nonsense. Just things that happen and you're like, that doesn't make any sense. Nonsense, because that's the way that they wrote it, so that's the way that they shot it, even though it doesn't read. It doesn't come through that way. So like, James Marsden, uh, his sister-in-law is marrying this guy. And the whole joke is he's like the super good looking, big, huge buff guy. And they're like playing a sport or something. And the big buff guy has all of his bros and they're all big and buff. And all of a sudden they're writing James Marsden to be like the nerdy little dweeb who's like trying to go up against these guys. And he looks over at his team of people that we don't know and they're dweebs or whatever. And like James Marsden is ripped. He's ripped. <laughs> He's also a big buff guy. So like the husband guy is like, oh, hey, give it, show me your muscles. And he shows his big, huge muscle. And then James Marsden's like, oh, ha, ha, he, he, and like flexes his muscle. And this giant bicep bulges out of his shirt. They're trying to communicate to us that he's a weak little dweeb and he's just objectively not. But that's the way they wrote the scene. That's the way they wrote this. James Marsden, he's, he's a lame little guy compared to, like, it just, it doesn't, just constantly like what what why did they why are they just assuming that that makes sense and that and that works and the effects were bad <laughs> like the, the effects were not good i mean like they're serviceable most of the time but like and i thought like this is probably just me but like no like all my friends were just like, wow, that looked really bad. Like, j there's so many different scenes where it just doesn't look good. They clearly rushed it. They, I mean, the other movie came out a couple of years ago. They rushed this movie. There are some shots where this, I mean, like, it doesn't help that when I was ordering the tickets, I thought that the screen was on the other side. So I was just <laughs> trying to order seats that were like further back and I ended up putting them pretty close to the front. Um, so we had a big close up view, probably didn't help, but like, there were a lot of scenes where just like, there's just an effect and you're like, that looked, that looked bad. It just didn't, it just didn't look good. It didn't, it didn't turn out right. And even like the animation isn't that good. The way that the characters talk, like it's just, it's okay, but it really isn't that expressive or anything. And like other little things, you know, like knuckle, they, they look like plush toys. You know, like it's definitely improvement over the old design, but then like Knuckles has like gloves Instead, like his fists, they're like gloves, but they're like these big plushy gloves and it just makes him look like a big plushy stuffed animal <laughs> or something. Here's another thing. I got so many things. I already hate all of the sappy human stuff. You know, the whole, the, the first movie, it felt so forced. It was just like this whole theme of friendship. Oh, you're my friend, aren't you? Yeah, it turns out we're friends and friends is what makes the hearts happen and beat the bad guy. Um, so like, it's already so, uh, and then this one is about being a hero and taking responsibility, blah, blah, blah. And like, it's already uncomfortable and weird and boring. But now the theme in this movie is he's not their friend, he's their son. And like, I get the relationship. He's young, they wanna protect him. And there's even one part in the movie where she's like, let's go get our son. And like, it's kind of heartwarming that she would refer to him that way. It's kind of like, oh man, it's like, it's, it's, it's nice. Like, that's nice. But then they go too far. Then like at the end of the movie, he calls James Marsden dad. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Pump the brakes. You can't like, you can kind of say if he's like their son, but to the point where he's literally calling them mom and dad, this is a Sonic movie. This is the Sonic movie that I am watching in a theater. It's got Sonic calling James Marsden and Tika Sumter mom and dad. I'm your son now. I live in the real world in your house with your dog and I'm your little baby Sonic boy. What? <laughs> Wow, why? What is that? It's so weird and awkward. And like the ending, it ends, well, of course, T 
Tails abandons wherever he came from. Who cares? Because they don't care at all. And we only know about Tails because of all that. Oh my gosh, that's the thing. I didn't even mention the exposition dumps. The story, the plot is so bad that like every once in a while, someone will just be like, blah, 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 blah. I come from this place and just these exposition dumps, which is always a mark of just a te of just terrible writing. And a bad story is when you have to keep just like dumping all this info. But even then the info doesn't even fill in all the blanks. So... That's a whole other thing. So at the end, Tails abandons his world that he can My home world. What's your home world? Where do you live? What is this multiverse? There are apparently aliens everywhere and nobody's even like acknowledging that. Knuckles, same thing. Oh, I left my family behind. I'm blah, blah. I'm your friend now. I used to be this intergalactic warrior and now I'm like, I'm their son. Like they're, they're, they're a family now. Like the end scene. I'm watching a Sonic movie. Watching a Sonic movie. Oh man, big Hollywood Sonic movie. And it ends with Sonic and Tails and Knuckles playing baseball and Sonic calling a guy dad. And then they all decide to go get some ice cream. And Knuckles jumps in the, and they all, they all jump in and Knuckles is like, ha ha, I am the warrior of ice cream, ha ha. And they all jump in their nice brand new Toyota truck and drive off into the sunset. Sunset. That's that's the Sonic movie that I just saw. That's the Sonic movie that I just saw. That's how it ended. Now Sonic and Tails and Knuckles are the little baby boys of of these people. They're their kids now. They're their kids and they're going to live in their house and have slumber parties. That's the Sonic movie. That's, so that's Sonic 2. And, uh, post-credits. The big thing. I'm, I'm glad I didn't get it spoiled. And you know what? Even though this is a spoiler review, I won't say it here. Just, just in case. Just in case. But I will say, it did have me hooping and hollering just because of, like, the... Just because of it. But, like, it... So wasted on this movie. I, I, in that moment, I could not help but imagine a timeline where there was a good Sonic movie. No, not just a good Sonic movie. They're creating a Sonic cinematic universe. There's gonna be a third one. There's gonna be a Knuckles show. It, it's a dream come true. And then at the end, this big revelation is just like, oh, like I, it would be so good, but it was just, it was just wasted. Just, just wasted. So to wrap things up, uh, I I didn't like this movie. I I didn't have high expectations. I wasn't expecting Shakespeare. You know, I wasn't expecting the best movie ever. I expected just like, ah, eh, it's kind of fun. But it still managed to be just a confusing, cliched mess. Just a mess. The whole thing was rushed. It's clear that they just, they rushed out the script. They wrote a treatment. They said, that works. It checks all the boxes. Get it in production. Rush the effects. Rush everything. And just do it. Because who cares? They'll go anyway. They'll buy it anyway. You know, it's just like, I I don't want to be one of those people that says, you you only like this thing because it's, because I hate that. I hate it when people do it to me. And it's just wrong. And like, if you're like, no, I love the movie. I'm not going to be like, you only like it because it's Sonic. But like, I, I, so I'm not saying that, but I am saying that I am confused. I'm very confused with this and the first movie. The first movie looked so bad and everyone thought it was the worst looking thing ever. And all they changed was Sonic. They didn't change anything else except the design of Sonic. And everyone loved it. And now it's the same, just, the same, uh, the same schlock, and people like people like it. People love it. Are you? It. Can, I mean, I don't. I don't want to say it's just because it's. So, but like, if it wasn't Sonic, would you? I don't know. That's what I'm not getting. People rip on all these other bad kids movies, and the only difference, exclusively, between them and this, is that this has Sonic in it, and that's where I'm confused. That's why I'm confused. 
I will think of more things to say about this movie. I will think of other things that I want to point out. And I will be genuinely upset that I didn't remember to say them here because this is this is the only chance I've got. This is this is the thing. This is my mo this is my video on the Sonic 2 movie. Um, but I, I gotta I gotta wrap it up. I gotta I gotta stop somewhere. So I'm stopping right here. Okay, I actually do have one more thing. There's a whole subplot where Sonic can't swim and he doesn't like the water. And then like when that culminates into the thing where he's got a he's drowning in the water, you don't play the drowning theme? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Like really? That was an easy one. That was a gimme. Sheesh. You, I, just, same as the last one, I will say, you will probably like it. You probably did like it. You probably like it. Most people like it. And I don't get it. I do not understand it. Not even almost. But if everyone's happy, that's great. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a, this could just be a lot about this movie. I just don't understand because I'm not a big Sonic fan, but it's not, that's not it though. It's that the jokes are bad. Being a Sonic fan doesn't make jokes good. I'm happy for everyone. Sonic fan base is happy. They're eating well. And that's great. And it's great. So that's it. I'm going to lose a lot of subscribers. I lost a couple hundred <laughs> after the last review. And this one is going to lose more. <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. If you feel that my opinion on this is not acceptable, you cannot support me anymore. I fully understand. You may, I give you permission, my blessing <laughs> to unsubscribe. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so why don't you go down to those comments and let me know what you thought about the Sonic 2 movie. I'm not gonna be reading those comments. I'm gonna try not to read anything because I'm gonna hear the same things and I'm, I just don't, it's fine. You like the movies, cool. Awesome. I will say, um, <laughs> We all had this same feeling too, be my friends. We were all like, I was feeling sort of optimistic about the Mario movie because even if it's like a mess, it might still be like an entertaining mess. But after this, it's just kind of like, oh man, <laughs> I kind of want to, I really hope we don't have to go through this again. We're going to be standing in the same spot outside the theater saying this. I just hope not. But man, this really hasn't, this really hasn't gotten me hopeful. For Mario, but I'll see you for Mario. You know what? I'll see you later this year. Talking about the Mario movie, whatever, whatever that is. So, um, bye.